Your Excellency Hail Miriam Desali, former Prime Minister of Ethiopia. Dr. Jean Dak Mijawar Maria, Minister of Environment, Rwanda. Mr. Kadu Sibunya, the Chief Executive Officer of the African Wildlife Foundation, AWF. Rwanda government officials, members of the Fourth Estate, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning to you all and receive hearty greetings from Botswana. I'm greatly honored and privileged to say my message of acceptance with you this early in the year. This must be a sign that 2022 has great things planned for all of us. I am especially pleased to be joining my esteemed dear friends and peer, His Excellency Paul Kagame, in championing African conservation through the upcoming one-of-a-kind International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN, Africa, Protected Areas Congress, APC, that is slated for March this year. This auspicious event has been a long time coming, and I'm finally glad to witness it come to fruition. A hearty congratulations to the government of Rwanda, the IUCN, the AWF, and all the partners who have worked tirelessly to ensure Africa unite for sustainable future. Something in my gut tells me that this Congress will be a tipping point for not only Africa, but also the global community. APAC must be a turning point for the relationship between the global community and African institutions. As Africans, we recognize the pivotal role the global community and international organizations have played over the last 60 years. However, for change to be sustained in Africa, there is need to give agency to African institutions at all levels, local to national and national to regional that African communities and the institutions will be driving the conservation agenda is necessary for ownership and integration of the conservation agenda with the aspirations and vision for the Africa we want. There is a need for cooperation with the global community, but one that is premised on respect and equal partnership with African institutions on the continent. There is a need for greater trust in the capabilities of Africans and African institutions to lead the conservation agenda. Over the past two years, COVID-19 has disrupted tourism and travel in an unprecedented way, putting at risk millions of livelihoods in Africa and across the world. The sudden widespread global pandemic offered no grace period for people to stock up or make alternative arrangements. And it was only a matter of weeks before economic collapse was imminent for most. More often than not, we tend to focus entirely on the wildlife and forget the important role of the local communities living adjacent to wildlife areas, or even more importantly, therefore, those who host wildlife on their land play in safeguarding the ecosystem. During the pandemic, while the wildlife thrived and roamed freely through the African plains, it is the communities whose livelihoods are mainly dependent on tourism who suffered the brunt of the economic strain. This is why creative resource mobilization ought to 
not only address species conservation, but also support community livelihoods. Communities are the last line of defense for wildlife which roam their land. Therefore, sustainable conservation related enterprises would go a long way in ensuring communities reap benefits from conservation and may provide long lasting solutions to conservation challenges at scale. In order to curb these ever present risks, we must increase the level of community engagement given their critical role in wildlife conservation as well as maintain eternal vigilance to ensure poaching is eliminated. It is now imperative that they are empowered and supported in their role as critical decision makers and their contribution in conserving biodiversity and protecting large areas recognized. These communities have lived in conservation areas and near protected areas for centuries and have proven to be the best stewards of their natural resources. They perfectly understand both the intrinsic and financial value of wildlife and wildland. This is why they deserve more dignity and greater rights access over the interventions taken to secure the conservation of biodiversity. During the African Protected Areas Congress, these are the concerns we aim to bring to the fore and creating lasting solutions that will ensure that the rights of these communities remain at the center of these discussions. The conference will offer the best platform to address and further improve the relationship between protected area authorities and communities. We really are all on the same side. In the same breath, we would like to take this, the same opportunity to appeal to Africa's largest population, who are the youth with the global statistics indicating that by 2050, the African continent will have the largest number of young people in the world. It simply means that they represent Africa's greatest opportunity for safeguarding its biodiversity and future as both leaders and custodians. We must therefore ensure that their voices are heard and incorporated during this Congress because they will bear either the brunt of the benefits of our current decisions. That said, I'm more than thrilled to accept my role as one of the patrons of the upcoming Africa Protected Areas Congress. And I hope to see you there so that we can forge a brighter future for our children and our grandchildren. I would therefore like to take this opportunity to invite you to join us in March in Kigali. Do ensure that you register for the conference and have a chance to be part of history in the making. I look forward to meeting you there. See you at APAC 2022.